So um, we've created our hole and it's now showing on both the top layer and uh, the middle layer here, which is great. It's also in the bottom layer, but we can remove that when we laser cut and that won't be a problem. So that's creating our hole in our layers. Now we're ready to put our follower in position. So I need to create a follower. So I'm going to right click new component, call this follower and do a new sketch. Um, I'm gonna put it in this plane because it's gonna be vertical. Again, I'm gonna just draw my circle. Dimension that, that is gonna be 0.248. Stop the sketch, I'm gonna extrude this. And this, you'll have to kind of do some fiddling with how long of an extrusion you want. I'm just gonna do, um, I don't know, maybe three and a half for right now. And then I can always decrease that if it's too long. Now I'm going to insert that into the holes and have it rest on the top of that cam it is my, my eventual goal here. So to do that, I need to create a slider constraint uh, joint um, with that. So I'm gonna go ahead and capture the position currently um, I'm going to click on the bottom. Actually, I'm going to click on slider. Click on this bottom section there, and then I'm going to do the bottom of this. And I learned um, yesterday that if you um, hold down control, you can actually then select multiple sections of this, and it won't snap to anything else, which is really kind of cool. So I want to I want to basically rub over so I get this face, and if you notice, there's different snap points there. I could do the midpoint, which is you'll see right in there, or the bottom or the top of that. So if I hold Control, I then can move to any of those other two without going to this surface or this surface when I move up and down. So I'm going to snap it to this one, and now it shows a little animation. Uh, what it can do, but you should be able to see that it's lined up with the base of that. And now I can do an offset um, to bring it down to the top of this item, uh, which is going to be 1.125, I believe. Maybe not quite that far. Let's check. No, that's a little too far. So it would be like 1.0625. Um, I don't know exactly what that value is, but that, that looks pretty good right there. Um, and I'm going to say OK. So this now, uh, I have a slider. If I go back to my main assembly, this slider now will move up and down. Um, this one will move, but if you notice, they don't move with each other. So that's where we can go in and create a contact set. So we're gonna go in um, under assemble, there's enable contact sets, and now it creates a contact sets and we have to then um, create a new contact set. So we wanna have a contact set between this piece and this piece, and we're gonna say okay. And now when I rotate this, it should move that follower up. And now you're like, well, it doesn't move it back down. Um, that's because we just moved it out of the way. And the same thing goes true here. If I have it here and I push this down, you'll see it rotates that down into the position there. Now, sometimes it, it does some funky things and will go through the part. Um, that's not supposed to happen, but again, there's some things with Fusion 360 that work well and some that don't work so well. And this contact set stuff doesn't work the greatest. But what we want to do is we want to change our joint, our slider here. We can edit the joint limits and we can say where it rests in space. So we're going to say that it rests at zero, which is where we originally, you know, constrained it in its position. So now when I rotate this, it should be able to rotate it and push it up. Uh, let, me, let me click on this. 
and this should allow me to rotate it up. Now, it, again, it gets kind of hitchy, so it might hitch right there, but then when we come back down, um, it should follow down with, there it goes. So again, it's a little weird in that uh, when it's doing the calculations. It could be my slow computer, um, but anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and put this back to zero. And then I can go into this uh, revolve, right click, and I can animate model, and it will rotate this for me and essentially show me what that's going to do. And again, it does a little, does a little hitch, but this is this is good enough. This shows me, okay, I've got this going through a revolve. This is then moving on a slider up and down. This is essentially what I want you to be able to have for your device, is to, to be able to show this right here. If you don't like all the work planes and the joints showing up, you can always you know turn those off. You can go into in our cam. You can turn off construction, and that gets rid of some work planes. And then in our axle, turn off the construction lines there. And now it kind of cleans up your model. But that video right there showed you how to uh, locate your holes, uh, add a follower, and then constrain the follower so it slides up and down with your cam.